What is up, my Canadian cousins, my friends north of the border, those whom I appreciate very, very much? Um, today, I am going to be reacting to something that ever since day one on this channel, you guys have been recommending, and I just haven't gotten to it for various reasons, but it is Heritage Minutes. Um, I understand that these were things that were played in the maybe 1980s, 1990s, um, and a lot of you feel very nostalgic for it because they were little vignettes of uh, heritage minutes, literally, I guess, and in, in, in historical events uh, important to Canada, which I think is a great way to learn. So uh, I've got a little list on my screen here of, of uh, topics, and, and the one that jumps out to me that I would love to do first is the Underground Railroad. So let's get into it. Oh, and please remember to like, subscribe if you have not, and hit that notification bell. Thank you so much. Pa should have been here by now. He's three hours late already. Pa ain't gonna make it! One of them slave catchers got someone to help, but I just know Liza, it! Liza, you both made it past the border yesterday. We've all Ma. done this before. He's our Pa, he'll be here! Come, let's pray. <laughs> no more prayers! Liza! Between 1840 and 1860, more than 30,000 American slaves came secretly to Canada and freedom. They called it the Underground Railroad. Okay, wow, yes, very, very short. Um, but I can see if they are doing these over and over again that, you know, almost through osmosis, if you're sitting there watching television and they have these between uh, programs that eventually you just get, you build up a wealth of knowledge about these uh, little individual events and maybe it sparks curiosity to learn more. This particular one I wanted to do because obviously this is part of our shared history uh, Canada and the United States and the Underground Railroad is, you know, one of those amazing, um, triumphs of, uh, of those people who, uh, have good conscience and really did what they could to, uh, help enslaved people escape into Northern states, uh, where slavery was banned and, uh, to their freedom, uh, through a very intricate, web. I mean, obviously, this wasn't literally a, a railroad. It was coded uh, names. You know, you had your conductor, uh, you had your station, you know, which were safe houses in these in these intricate routes uh, in order to um, get these uh, poor souls to freedom. Uh, and of course, what happened was that uh, there was always, since the late 1700s, a fugitive slave law, but it was rarely enforced in the North. Um, but uh, as free states and slave states were added to the Union, the balance of power kept shifting in uh, government and in Congress, and uh, there were lots of compromises along the way as states were added. Uh, and one of those resulted in the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850 which was absolutely terrible, but um, made uh, punishments a little bit more harsh for people who were helping uh, fugitive slaves and, and allowed um, uh, private bounty hunters and the like to come into the Northern uh, Territories and uh, capture or recapture uh, enslaved people who had made it to their freedom and drag them back. And the sad fact is that they kidnapped people who were freed uh, black people in the north who were not escaped slaves uh, and effectively you know kidnapped these poor souls and brought them into slavery and so Canada's role in it became very much more important um, at that point because obviously uh, Canada was beyond the jurisdiction of any law of the United States and particularly the fugitive slave law and also was farther and so you know uh, it became, I think, I think I had read somewhere that Canada became known as heaven for escaped slaves. And so, you know, these wonderful people of, of good conscience, both black and white in, in the United States, helped get um, 
these fugitive slaves up to Canada where they could live a life of freedom, um, own property, I believe even the men could vote. Um, and, uh, you know, that was just an absolute wonderful part of this great story that we share together. Okay, thank you for watching that one. Um, I spoke a lot about it, but this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. So let's move on to another couple, shall we? Oh my God, look at that. Yeah, thank God she's a half a mile away. Huh? She's loaded, boys. You gotta get out of here. It's full of explosives. Children, explosives. come on. Oh no, don't get out of here. Vince! We're back in the school. Please, get these children out of here. That ship is gonna blow. No! Mr. Coleman! Get these people out of here. That ship is gonna blow. The train. What? People, get out of here. It's gonna blow up. Mission ship on fire. Stop train. Please, God, answer. Goldman, there's no time. The train's coming in towards Pier 6. I've got to warn you. Come on, Vince. Come on. There are 700 people aboard it. I've got to stop it. Come on. Come on. Acknowledge. Halifax was devastated. 9,000 wounded, 2,000 dead, including Vince Coleman, dispatcher. Oh, my friends. So I had done a um, reaction to the Halifax explosion a uh, month or so ago, and a lot of you suggested that I check out this heritage moment. And at the end, I mean, that video was just extreme. It just got to me. Um, and especially at the end, because they personify the heroicism of people in the form of Patrick Vincent Coleman. Vince Coleman, a name I will never forget for his heroicism that day. And this was a nice little portrayal of it. Um, and I'm glad they, they did one of these, but honestly, like the whole, the full story of what, of what Vince did and, and, um, and his last telegraph message, knowing he was going to die. And he knew it. He knew it. Um, he said something like, this will be our, our, our last uh, message, boys. Goodbye. Uh, incredible. So that that's really cool. I'm glad I did that. And I can see, you know, these things are really valuable. You know what this reminds me of a little bit? It's not quite the same thing, but the, I can see where there's nostalgia for this. We had growing up here um, something called Schoolhouse Rock that was always played in between Saturday morning cartoons. And... And uh, it was done to song, and they were cartoon uh, moments, but it was all educational. Um, they did, they did uh, language and English, they did math, they did history, uh, they did uh, biology and science, they did one on the nervous system, and these songs were very catchy. Probably one of the most famous is I'm Just a Bill, and it explained how the process of um, legislation goes through Congress in a way that, you know, children can enjoy. And anyone my age, uh, growing up in the 70s and 80s, feels ex really nostalgic for these things. And we learned a lot. And I, I, I have uh, a similar vibe from how you probably feel about these Heritage Minutes. Okay, let's tackle one or two more, shall we? Wow, where are the rest of your men? You've got more men back there than I have in the whole of Western Canada. Yeah, but Sitting Bull held a war dance last night. General Terry, in Canada, Sitting Bull has kept the Queen's peace. He's agreed to meet with you. And Spotted Eagle. That face doesn't look ready to come back to the States without a fight. I President Hayes says you will be received kindly and... The grandmother's medicine house is no place for lies. Not two more words. This country. That actor, Graham Greene, I think his name is, was in Dances with Wolves and many other wonderful movies. We do not belong shows. to you. We will stay here and keep the grandmother's peace. She will let us raise. And Hayes says you will be received kindly. And the grandmother's medicine house is no place for lies. Not two more words. This country does not belong to you. We will stay here and keep the grandmother's peace. She will let us raise our children. We do not want lies. These men, Walsh, McLeod, they're the first white men who, who never lied to us. I didn't know then that they'd be starved out of Canada and go back to the States. Walsh would resign over it, and Sitting Bull would be murdered. Yeah, um, I know a bit about uh, Sitting Bull's time in Canada, and... Uh, I guess the grandmother he's referring to would have been Queen Victoria at the time. 
Yeah, unfortunately, uh, both of our nations have a uh, atoning to do with the way we've treated natives, uh, First Nations people, Inuits, Native Americans, etc., etc. Okay, very cool. Let's do one more for now. I guess I could probably spend a long time doing these. I don't care what the law is. I will never be a slave. That word, I hate it. It rests on my tongue like rot. Peter, how does it feel to get paid for your work? There are rumors freedom's coming for us all. Freedom, you know that's all I want. Chloe, careful. Vroom men would rather sell you across the river to America than let you go free. Then I'll run. I've run before. Maybe this time for good. No! No! Just get no! her into a boat! No! Chloe Cooley's resistance led to Canada's first legislation limiting slavery. After 200 years, slavery was abolished in Canada in 1834. Well, that one was interesting. So I, I, I didn't know anything about her. Um, and I did know that there was some slavery in Canada or in the colonies that are now Canada, but on a very small scale, not nearly like the American South. Um, probably because economics didn't quite require it. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure you guys will let me know. But uh, yeah, I didn't know about her. And that's, that's, that's very interesting. I would love to know a lot more. This only, you know, whetted my appetite for more uh, information about this topic. And I think what, what they say, uh, slavery was abolished in Canada in 1834. Isn't that when it was abolished throughout the entire British Empire, I believe. And uh, so, you know, we struggled with it for another 30 years and had to have a civil war before it ended. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's really that's a really interesting topic. I I'm, I'm, want to dive in more. So listen, these were cool. Um, if you want me to do more on these, I, I, I'm certainly happy to. I will uh, probably watch more on my own if not, but let me know in the comments and I would be glad to revisit these because there seems like a whole ton of them. All right, my friends, thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Take care.